AITAH for leaving my husband for him and his parents' rude behavior? I am not OOP. OOP is you complaint helpful 7442. Originally posted to R. AITAH. AITAH for leaving my husband for him and his parents' rude behavior? Trigger warnings. Death of a parent. Emotional abuse. Mentions of cancer. Spousal neglect. Less than. And NBSP. Original post October 11, 2023. I-25F have been married to 24M for four years. The first two years of our marriage. We were stationed in North Carolina but have since moved to Texas where his family lives. Since moving to Texas, I've gotten to know my in-laws and what I know is that they are all disrespectful. All of them. Almost as if it's hereditary. Here are a few examples. I'm Korean and my husband's family is Mexican. My sister-in-law tried bulgogi which is beef marinated in a sweet sauce and gagged in front of me when she took a bite of it, spitting it out and complaining that she didn't expect it to taste like that. Every time we go out to eat, my in-laws will run the waiters back and forth asking for special requests and refills. But if they don't like the food or they forget one item that they ordered, they will literally tip the waiter change from out of their pocket, I'm talking $5 on a $120 bill, even if their service was amazing. If we go into a store or go to the gym and it's about to close, they will be the last people to leave. And not last. As in they close at 9 p.m. and they're leaving at 9 p.m. Last as in they close at 9 p.m. and we're barely walking out the door at 9.15. Every time an instance like this happens. My husband and I get into it. They usually end with my husband making excuses like that's the just the way my family is or I don't care what other people think and neither should you. My last straw was when my mother was unexpectedly diagnosed with cancer. I flew back to my home in Korea to take care of her for a while when she was getting her chemo. I stayed for two weeks before needing to go back to my home in Texas for work obligations and can you Guess who never once reached out to me the whole time I was there? Yup. My in-laws. Not once did I receive any call or text message. Not even when I came back did the topic of my mom come up. My husband told me he told them about my mom. So I don't understand why no one could have just checked up on me or at least called my mom. The next time we saw my in-laws was the next day I came back from Korea. They were over for dinner. I waited to see what they were gonna talk about. And as they continued discussing what cows they wanted to buy, I left to the room and didn't come out for the rest of the night. When they left, my husband angrily confronted me, telling me how disrespectful I was. I honestly didn't even have it in me anymore to fight. I just packed my bags and booked the next flight to Korea. All my husband's and in-law's messages and phone calls are being ignored because I just cannot stand their disrespectful behavior. And to hear my husband calling me disrespectful was enough. Maybe I'm overreacting, but honestly, this behavior is exhausting. I deal with it every time we go out and I'm done. I don't want to be surrounded by people like this and I'd rather focus my attention on my mom. Am I the asshole? AITAH has no consensus bot. But based on the top comments, OOP is considered NTA and NBSP. Relevant comments. Thank you for all your responses. Those that agree with me and those that don't because it allows me to see other sides of the situation besides my own. I just wanted to clarify a few things real quickly. 1. I did not divorce my husband. I am staying in Korea for the time being too. For those of you asking. My husband did not call me while I was in Korea the first time. Any conversations we had was initiated by me. He did not reach out to me. Nor did my in-laws. And NBSP. Update October 12, 2023. To clear things up a little. 
This situation happened over a month ago and I have been in Korea ever since. My husband and I did not get divorced but we had talked things out and decided I needed space to take care of my mom first and whatever problems that we had can be discussed at a better time. As for my in-laws, I haven't spoken to them since. I really wanted to work things out after reading a few of the comments saying my in-laws behavior is not the fault of my husband. I thought that maybe I was being too judgy over behavior that I am not used to. That maybe they're not all bad. But they just have a few faults. As for my mom, she hasn't been doing so well. She's been losing a lot weight because she says that everything she eats tastes like metal and she's been in constant pain. It's gotten so bad that she can't even get out of bed by herself. On top of that, I'm having a tough time watching my mom struggling and feeling like I don't have anyone on my side during this time. Especially since my husband's family still hasn't reached out to me. Last week, my husband reached out to me telling me that his mom had tonsillitis and was going in for surgery. Reluctantly, I reached out to her and told her that I would be praying and wishing her a safe surgery. I even had the hospital's gift shop send flowers up to her room because I couldn't be there. I figured that maybe they just weren't the type of people to reach out and that I should put. Whatever happened in the past my husband expressed how grateful she was and how happy she was to have received the flowers, hoping that I was doing okay in Korea. Unfortunately, I wasn't. Fast forward to a week later. My mother's condition had gotten so bad that she lost her battle with cancer and passed away. I told my husband what happened and he was in just as much shock as I was. He said that he was sorry. Telling me how much of a good mother she was and how happy she must have been to have me by her. Sighed during her last few days. We were preparing to get the funeral done in the next few days so I asked my husband what day he could be here. He was hesitant on the phone, saying that he felt bad for my mother and all. But he also had his mother to worry about. How he needed to be there for her just like I was there for mine. I was in complete shock and just hung up the phone. He is missing my mother's funeral to take care of his mother who had tonsillitis surgery. A week ago. Unbelievable. Any chances I ever thought of giving him was completely out the window. It was insane to believe that he felt like his mom recovering from a very minor survey was more important than the death of my mom and his mother-in-law. I'm not saying that tonsillectomy isn't important but I'm sure she'll recover just fine as it's a very common surgery and the downtime is 12 weeks. And it's already been a week. As of now, I have hired a lawyer to discuss divorce and I'm going to therapy. I plan on going back to the US to end things with my husband. Quit my job and take my stuff back with me after my mom's funeral. As for his family, I haven't heard from them. Shocking right? Whatever. I'm just glad I get to be done with him and his family and that I'll be able focus on myself and my mental health. And NBSP. Relevant comments. Throw away my 1009. What? I mean I'm sorry for your loss but having your tonsils out as an older person is pretty dangerous. It's less dangerous as a child. And people do die. I get the fact you are annoyed at his parents but it seems like you want to be mad. Like you are looking for reasons to leave your husband. Are you interested in another person? Unless his parents live with you there is a way to just stay away from them. Ah. Yes. I understand that now that it is not minor but she is fine and already back to her job working. I should have mentioned that. And NBSP. This is a repost sub IAM not oop. Good for op because she will never stop being second place if her mother's death isn't a good. Enough reason for her husband to come to her side. Her husband's mom has multiple other family members who can check in on her if necessary. Oop is young and has so much life still ahead of her there is absolutely no reason for her to 
Continue fighting for a relationship with someone who has no intention to improve things and actually put her first best wishes to her future in Korea. Of course someone shamed up at the end as though the mill doesn't have at least one other child and her husband to help her an entire week after her surgery. The commenter about how risky the surgery is for older people. If the soon the BX is 24, the X mill could be just 45. She isn't in an age in which surgeries get risky because of age or the healing process is so slow. As someone who just got 42 today, if you treat people as nearly dead, the, well, actually, comment about the risks of tonsillectomy as an adult was a great lesson to other people. That just because a topic touches on something you know a lot about, it doesn't mean that you need to share that information as if it was some, gotcha, response even, when it very much is not. I imagine that not coming to support your partner is a final nail in the coffin. Not contacting her to support her in any way also seems very casual. There are many ways to show you care and they understand that as they are appreciative when she does so, but it doesn't go both ways. Sounds like burnout in the relationship in putting up with disrespectful and entitled behavior. I get tonsils being removed as an adult. Hubby and daughter both went through it. But if someone died, they would have insisted I went to support the person who lost a parent. Oop needs to be free of the enmeshed family and live her best life. Without them. She's smart to have ended it now and not after decades of entanglements. This guy was never going to give her what she needed from a spouse. The fact he didn't go after her, the moment she left, really said everything. Those in-laws sound like a nightmare and the husband sounds like he has a case of mamitis. Good riddance to him. I want whatever that last commenter is smoking if it'll give me the sheer audacity to tell someone who's clearly being neglected by their husband and mistreated by their ILs that they're just looking for a reason to leave the relationship. I had my tonsils removed as an adult. I even reacted badly to the anesthesia. I still went home the same day and, while I couldn't speak for a week, I was back at work three days later. It's considered a very safe surgery and it's really rare that someone has a terrible side effect. Never mind death. 10% of all surgeries done in the US are tonsillectomies and 3 ten thousandths die. In comparison, the likelihood of dying because of gun violence in the US is 1 315th and as a passenger in a car, it's 1 491st. When my dad died, my husband got there right the next day. If husband's mother had any compassion or love for Dill, she would have forced him to go to his wife. A tonsillectomy? Seriously? Sure, it's possible to have complications and die from one. Any surgery has theoretical risks. But in the United States about 1 in every 20,000 adults who has a tonsillectomy might have such a serious complication. By comparison, each and every one of us, in the States, has a 1 in 103 chance of dying in an auto accident. So just driving or riding in cars the average amount that an American does is 200x more dangerous than getting a tonsillectomy as an adult. And who on earth doesn't like bulgogi? That is, like, one of the most delicious things ever. While yes, tonsillectomy is a much more severe surgery as an adult, the mill was not left alone. There was no reason that Oop's husband couldn't have flew out for a few days to be with her in her grief. When they say if they wanted to, they would. It's true. Why in the hell did that last commenter come at her like that? Did they even read her posts? This is a long list of disrespect for Oop and they decided ignore everything else.
just to come in hot about the risks of an adult having their tonsils removed? I doubt anyone in OOP's situation would tolerate all of that. But yes, sure, go ahead and tell me to suck up my mom's death, and plan her funeral, and go to her funeral, and experience one of the most difficult days of my life, alone, without my husband, who didn't call me for weeks while my mom was dying, because his mom was having her tonsils out. Great advice, jackass. When my grandma passed away, my husband was my rock and anchor. She had a slow and painful decline and I couldn't even bring myself to visit her in her last months. As I was scared to see her like that, my husband reassured me as I sobbed with guilt, held me as I mourned when we finally got the news she passed, grasped my hand during the funeral, and all the while he was asking me if I needed him to do more. Not to mention, his family reached out to me personally and made sure I was okay. Oop deserves far more and far better than what her ex and his family gave her. Even if it is a month ago, how does she doesn't add all these new information in first post? Timeline doesn't make sense. One day later, all hell broke loose. Come on, if you are going to farm for karma, at least wait a week. It seems like a clash of culture for me. I don't want to say that Korean culture is good and the US Mexican culture is bad. But there are some basic behaviors that tend to be overlooked by OOP's in laws. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our playlists full of similar content. Epic EraCast is like doom scrolling for your ears. Please like, share, and subscribe.